Hello all and welcome and welcome to the second uh, second part of Karma which is what we call our midweek special at the moment until we can find a better name for it. Mm-hmm. So Theo, do you want to get us started on Karma? No, absolutely. We we did talk about what, what it was and do you know one that's what we covered last time? Looking, essentially what we decided was that Karma is is uh, f- first of all it has deep religious connotations and it was simply one of the religious rules which was found to be a common denominator that made society function. In other words, it encouraged people to be nice to each other and therefore that made society work more effectively. And one of the reasons it encouraged people to be nice to each other was that it, it said to you, if you do good, good will come to you. If you do bad, bad, bad will come to you. Can I, can I just ask a question before you um, go into your deep analysis of this? Mm-hmm. But the thing is, the Indians call it karma because it comes from the... some. F- from, I suppose, from some, the Indian religion, doesn't it? Does it not? Or even Buddhism, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, however, but if you actually probably look at the Bible and probably even, uh, not that I've ever read the Quran, mm-hmm. but I would be not surprised. Isn't there a similar meaning to it in terms well, of see, inter- all it, how it's just how we interpreted it? You're right. It not? And, and we're going to talk. We're going to talk about this in more depth in in part two of our of our um, uh, other talk, which we talked about. Um, vested interest and in innate morals, mm-hmm. but you're right that bec- because there is there are sev- several common denominators to what makes people live together well and calmly and harmoniously. Then, of course, different religions will have their different versions of the same thing. Uh, w- what I think, though, that reading through everything, our interpretation of karma last time is the best, which is what it is: is deeds weighed against charm. Because the more charming you are, the more you can get away with, but only within reason, which is why, for instance, prison was full of nasty psychopaths and companies are headed by charming psychopaths on the whole. And of course, again, there is a balance because if the, if the deeds outweigh the charm, then, then, then they also get into trouble. And, and time and again, the research has shown that if people like you, if you're a professional and, and you make a mistake, you're much less likely to be complained about than if they don't like you. But the question we didn't answer, which is why we're doing a part two, is what do you do about it? So someone says to you, well, it's karma, karma will sort them out. You and I now know that's not the case. It's just an abstract idea to keep people functioning well with each other. So what, you sh- what should you do if someone does something bad to you and, and someone says to you, leave it alone, karma will sort them out? Well, I, 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 think, I think I said this last time and I've always, um, always been a believer that you need, if you've, you've got the responsibility that something has happened, that you, have, that you should actually sort it out mm-hmm. um, there and then, otherwise it'll continue happening. So, for example, if uh, you know... Um, Let's use a let's use a bad example. Actually, if you know a girl has been molested, but you don't do anything about it, that person will carry on and going doing that over and over again until someone else does it. So, by you saying karma will actually sort it out, rather than you taking responsibility to bring it to the attention of the right people, all you're doing is dumping responsibility to someone else. And it's the same with this whole Me Too campaign. If these people had come across at the beginning and said what was really happening. It would have saved a lot of women from being hurt, and uh, it would have been dealt with there, and it would have been dealt with there and then, and it wouldn't have, and it wouldn't have continued. Mm. However, twenty odd, thirty odd years later, you've put your own self, they've put their own self interest into bringing it to the attention because a lot of these have flagging careers, and by bringing it to their attention, all of a sudden that gets them back into the limelight. That's wrong. That that that's 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 taking advantage of what someone else has done and you're just piggybacking off, piggybacking Correct. off that. So, I mean, again, you, you've raised some issues with, with, which are very, very complicated. But if we go back to the simpler direct one, which is what do you do if someone does something to you? To me? Um, do you say... It's okay, karma will sort them out. Well, you know, there, there, there's part of the Old Testament of the Bible which sort of says uh, eye for an eye, and, and uh, I actually still am a believer of that one. Um, you sort it out. If someone hurts you, I think you need to do it right. I think you need to actually do it right back. I mean, actually, I'll tell you who actually does that extremely well, and, um, and that's Donald Trump. 
um, every time the media come up come to him and I actually heard him give a presentation about four years ago um, in London and um, one of the things he did in this presentation in his 90 minute very expensive presentation that they paid a lot of money for he actually did one of the things he did say that I actually did resonate with at the time was if someone does something to you you hit them back ten times harder mm. and you know what whether you like him or not you could pretty, pretty much say he's actually a, quite an authentic character in that respect mm. because every time someone has come at him he does come back guns blazing ten times harder admittedly he's not the most appropriate person when it comes to things like Twitter or everything but he does and um, uh, if you actually look at the number of the most successful people they don't rely on other people to actually resolve it. Mm. They will. They, they will. They will actually okay, intervene. But, but wait, no, but see, what you're describing is a disagreeable person, as as uh, as um, Jordan Peterson would say. So, th- for instance, he's doing something that is personality appropriate for him. Um, however, a lot of people it, it w- are more agreeable, and it would not be personality appropriate to attack someone back if they are attacked. So th- I think you, we've got to split this up into three portions. Number one is what's good for you. That's the most important thing because you've, you've, you have received an insult, an injury, and you have to get over it as effectively as you can. And if we, if we look at someone who's been traumatized, some people say the, f- the first thing you've got to do is express it, not hold it in. The second thing you have to do is accept what's happened. And some people say, well, you know, uh, maybe it's something that something is too traumatic to accept. But unfortunately, you've got to accept it. And here's something else. If you're ever going to get over it, if you're, if you're ever going to get over it, you have to forgive. Because if you don't forgive, you're not able to see it objectively Actually, that's and, yeah, go and, on. and move on. Because forgiving, what forgiving does is it says, I understand what happened. I understand why it happened. And I, because I understand, it's your responsibility I take the appropriate responsibility for myself, but it's yours, and you're never going to let you're never going to do that again. I will never let you do it again. So that is that is how you help a patient get over a serious trauma. Okay, okay can I? Okay, no, no, okay, not quite yet. Okay. However, okay, that's the first thing, but you still haven't dealt with that person because, of course, say that that person is whatever an abuser, a con artist, or whatever they will tend to pick their victims. So you can't say karma, 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 because these guys are picking their victims. They're not going to pick a disagreeable person who's going to hit them back. They're going to pick vulnerable people, okay? And those vulnerable people are much less likely to hit them back. So if you just get on and forgive them, it might be good for you, but you're going to let that person, in full knowledge, go ahead and abuse someone else. And you've got to live with that. But can I, I just want to, um, I want to go back to the point of forgiveness because it's actually a very interesting Mm -hmm. one. It's someone that, it's something that I've actually heard over and over again, um, but it is not something that resonates with me as well. But but, um, I've also heard a lot of people say, it's not just about forgiving them, it's about forgiving yourself. Is that correct? Um, could you, would you like, to expand, about, would you like about, to expand on that? Well, it's, it's, a, it's about understanding, first of all. For instance, if you're a little kid, then you have no responsibility, quite frankly. You know, it, it, you have to under, in fact, you can grow up with the, with the perverse notion that it was your fault. So part of understanding and forgiving is saying, well, you know, I forgive you because you were obviously a troubled person and, you know, you may have not known any better. But... I now know it's not my responsibility and you will never ever do that to me again. So, but, but as you grow up, then of course there, there will be varying proportions of responsibility that you have to okay, take. So, so, let, so let me ask you this. So what does someone need to do to forgive themselves? Well, for, what the, actions can they accept, take to well, forgive themselves? The number one thing is you have to be a very effective parent to yourself. Okay, so there are, there are three levels of parenting. As a child, you have your parents. And then the main job of a parent is to, is to teach and accept. Whatever you do, you, you know your parents will always accept you. A bit like God, really. You sin, you're accepted. When you're an adult, you have to be your own parent. In other words, you have to know that you're not going to be perfect and not have ridiculous goals for yourself all the time. Otherwise, you'll never be content. However, the ultimate parent, of course, as an adult, is you live within a society. You need a parent to the society, and that is the state so there are three levels of parenting that you have to go through. Now, therefore, for yourself, you have to 
accept yourself and you have to accept yourself and say I accept myself I know what I did as part of the the incident that happened and I know that I'm proportionately responsible in this regard mm -hmm. but not all of it for instance as an adult uh, unless you are forced beyond you know beyond any for any reasonable uh, way of predicting usually you're going to have some kind of uh, culpability usually Mm -hmm. whatever it is you will have some degree of culpability and if you had not acted in a certain way almost certainly that awful thing may not have happened to you obviously obviously it shouldn't have happened and and it's a, a, a very nasty person who did it to you but there will usually be a step that you took that made yourself vulnerable okay so how do you actually forgive someone sitting opposite you who let's say has murdered your son or your daughter or something. Mm. So how do, how does how does Jamie Bolger's mother forgive the two children who murdered her child what, at two uh, years old? And the, inst the first thing you'd think of, well, that's completely unforgivable and quite. And uh, if, if I was right. the mother, I'd probably want to go and kill them. However, how would that really leave me feel if I did that? Do you think that would bring my son back? No, it wouldn't. Okay. So that the whole point is that the initial emotional the instinctual response is wrong and it's not going to do you any good and and that person is not worth your spit they've they've done something indescribably bad they are obviously a very problematic person they've got their own demons to deal with and they are being dealt with very severely and at the time they probably did not know any better given their 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 level of psychological functioning and therefore, what you say is, you, you, you are a person of indes ind indescribable badness. And I forgive you for the person that you are, because... You, you, well, what do you mean? You I, because, Excuse because, me. because this person is never going to be in a good place, ever. If they, think, if they are capable of doing those things, their mind is never going to be at peace. Forgive them. Let them go their own miserable way and be punished by society. Because the number one thing is you. And if you say, I understand that you are an unbelievably bad person and bad person in this life do bad things. But, but let's face it, come on. If you actually went to a psychiatrist to see that... Um, you know, um, they're not going to get shrinked in one session, are they? Well, uh, who? The person who's been person, you know, so, so, so say that is Jamie Bulger's mother, for example. Mm -hmm. She's not going to recover. She's not going to get over that in one session. She's been carrying this for the best part of over 20 years. No, I'm, I mean, I'm you're, it's, the thing is, it's indescribably bad. And so, so you'll never get over it. You can only understand it and forgive and that is the best chance of reaching I, I, I'm, still not, I'm still not responding uh, to this hang on and that is the best chance of you having attaining any peace of mind okay it's not to say it's not to say that you'll ever achieve peace of mind but the closest you'll ever get because if you hate if you are vengeful then you will be destroyed by those feelings well actually <laughs> uh, you know what i actually heard it was on a tv show i can't remember what it was actually i do it was sons of anarchy and i know it's i know it's hollywood hollywood drama but there was one thing that uh, that was said in it where the guy was saying i want to act on revenge for example and um he, he asked well, he wasn't actually a mentor, but he, was, he actually asked this person. And the person turned around to him and says, Revenge is a physical need that needs to be acted upon so that the strong can remain focused. And do you know what? Actually, I thought, do you know what? Yeah, I, re I agree with that. No, because it's all consuming. You see, revenge is actually an emo it's not a physical need. It's an emotion. And emotions are fickle and unpredictable. And also because it is emotion then it's also a delusion and therefore the effects of acting on your emotion are also unpredictable yeah but so you want justice don't you sorry I mean, you, no well, there is no justice there, there, there is no real justice there's just the law okay and the law is not justice the law well, is the law and no, justice legal is justice, justice. Ah, but there's, right. there's moral justice uh, correct you're right but but the, the, the calm, calm, calmanic justice if you want the, to call it the, well the most important thing for you 
is your own peace of mind. That's what you need to achieve. And also so that you can continue functioning. Well, do, do, do you not think that people get peace of mind by acting on... on act no, by, because by the difficulty is what you do also reflects on you. So, And that's why I said to you what's personality appropriate and what is personality inappropriate. So, for instance, for Donald Trump hitting someone over the head because someone hits them, him.